Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Asma. Currently, I am in Mogadishu, Somalia, and I'm going to vlog just the everyday life here in Somalia, living with my family, and yeah, I'm going to vlog, you know, how we make food, our, my home, Hamidawene, like the capital of Somalia, and the beach. And I'll try to make this as detailed as possible. And unlike the turkey vlog, I'm going to show more of my face. And whoever else wants to be in the vlog, I'll start showing their faces as well. So yeah, I hope you like it. The Indian Ocean was really beautiful. And I went to the fish market, but I can't show you because it's very gory and I don't want to get you guys sick, but there's a lot of fresh fish and they even eat sharks. So <laughs> anything is edible in the sea. So we went to the Indian Ocean and took a look. I also took footage of a group of boys fishing and they weren't using fishing poles. They were using the string that they kept wrapping around their finger, which is interesting. I've never seen people fish that way. I mean, I have seen um, people fish in Turkey with fishing poles in the Galata Tower Bridge. So it's interesting to see how you don't really need much to do anything here. And I really like how people here use so much of their resources. Hamrawene is like the big city, the main city of Mogadishu. So when you go there, the roads are paved. And where I live is there is no paved road. So I show you multiple clips of the roads where the autos are. The majority of the autos here are red, unlike the ones in India that are yellow. I'd say 99% of the autos here are red and I think they are imported from Turkey because I see the Turkish flag in the majority of the autos in here. And as you can see, the roads are very paved and it was really a very enjoyable ride compared to the one back where I live. I took a clip of a group of people decorating the front of the car with flowers and just decorating the car overall. In Somali culture, that means someone is getting married and they drive around the neighborhood to show everyone that they are a newlywed couple. On our way to the Indian Ocean, we took a walk through Hamarwene and we were walking through the neighborhoods and the supermarkets because we wanted to go into the Indian Ocean. So I filmed myself walking in the streets. I was kind of nervous uh, holding a camera. I was holding my Canon G7X and I was nervous because I was getting a lot of attention, probably negative attention holding the camera. But yeah, this is how the streets look and that big brown tannish building right up ahead is a masjid and that day was friday so women weren't allowed in there but yeah A family relative owns this place where it's like a roti, like a bread store where they make bread for the morning 
and the bread is then taken and carried to different areas of Mogadishu and it was really cool seeing all of the bread being made. Welcome to my neighborhood. This is clearly a very bumpy road, nothing like Hamarawene. Although I did feel like it was a huge negative being a 30 minute drive away from the capital, I did think there were a lot of positives as we didn't have to hear traffic and we had our peace and quiet and we can see the stars very well at night. On our way to Hamarawene to see the Indian Ocean, what happened was literally 10 feet after the driver drove, his car got stuck in the sand and it happens a lot. So what happens is my cousins and my uncles get out of the car and like one or two drivers, they all literally push the car while one driver hits the gas and then they try to fix it. So they either dig out the wheel, I mean the sand around the wheel, or they have to push the car. And yeah, it's really difficult for people to drive around here. It's, it's a very bumpy road. So if you get car sick like my sister, it's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> And this is the nice home that we lived in. It was a three bedroom on each side. So it was a three bedroom home on the left side and on the right side. And it was a very spacious place. And I just showed the main exterior. Uh, we have big rocks surrounding our home. I don't know what that is for. And as I walk inside, I'm showing you the main porch area where we just sit and relax. And up above is two strings where we hang our clothes after washing them. And inside, I'm showing you my tent. My uncles bought us a tent to live inside where basically no mosquitoes or flies can come and bother us. You go inside, you zip it up, and then you get a nice good night's sleep every night. Here is a video of a group of boys playing soccer and as you can see I am censoring this one boy that was butt naked and I didn't know he was butt naked until I watched the footage right now so I've been spending a good 20 minutes censoring his body and as you can see these boys live right in the neighborhood they're playing soccer it is a very normal pastime and they do it almost every day. They have no rules. A lot of times they would push and shove and elbow each other. <laughs> you just saw somebody get yank, yanked. Yank. And that was a cool. Hey. This is called the souk, like the market. And I go here all the time with one of my aunts. And we go here to buy stuff. Here's one of the markets that have almost everything you would need, like milk powder, uh, vimto, oil, all that good stuff. We also went to a... <laughs> I don't want to talk about this very much, but we made chicken that day and we got two chickens and Here is a video of two chickens fighting each other Yeah, it was not very fun watching two chickens, you know die. So <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about it anymore But they were delicious and here is more of the marketplace And this is where my aunt goes almost every day to get fresh onions, potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, um, cilantro, garlic, all everything that she would ever need. And while she was negotiating with the, the lady, I got myself some mango juice. And here is a snapshot of how the marketplace looks. There's also meat sold at the marketplace, but I'm not going to show you because it's very gory. And this is where we bought our batis. Batis are like nightgowns that a lot of Somali women wear at home. And then we also bought hijabs from here. As you can see along the line, you see all of those different colored fabrics. You can actually recognize my blue colored one that I wear all the time in my videos. And I bought loads of colors so I can wear them during Ramadan. And the store was really nice. Like you get to choose your fabrics and they can make it for you within a few days. Hey guys, so I brought some snacks that I got today at the market. Well, 
I used to have, I just ate it. I didn't want to wait. So I went with my uncle today to get two different snacks. One of them is sliced mangoes in a plastic container and it tastes really good. I personally prefer it over just getting regular mangoes and like peeling it and all that good stuff because it's pre-peeled, they give you a plastic fork and you can eat it and it tastes really good. But I'm gonna show you this snack. Um, I think he said it's called bamboo or bandu with a da or ba, I am not sure. But it's basically this red stuff. It is, I don't know how to explain it. It's like this sweet and spicy stuff like it's like some sort of dressing that is packed onto a nut that is not edible. You basically put it in your mouth and you suck all of the red paste that's on here and then you spit out the nut. So I can just eat it. So You basically suck the red stuff. and you leave this brown part, the nut. My uncle didn't really explain it to me, so when I got it, I just like was like chewing from my, <laughs> I was chewing it. It's basically like, you cannot, or else you break your teeth, you know? But yeah. I've caught a large herd of camels walking past multiple times in my journey here in Somalia, and it's really cool to see. Right now, I am showing you the neighborhood that I live in. Here, right up ahead, you see a group of boys playing proper soccer. And you can tell because they're wearing neon shirts. And it's I think it's a big game because a lot of people are coming to watch. All right guys, this is how you make a fire here in where we live. So unfortunately there are no stoves. You have to make a fire on your own. So I use a bunch of charcoal and um, get a fan, a little bit of gasoline and then get to work. And I take like a bendable lid and I use all of my strength to try to start a fire. As you can see, I am almost there. And it's a lot of arm work, so. Success. Hi everyone, so today I'm at the beach. There's two different beaches in Mokadishu, but I'm at Al Jazeera, and next time we'll go to the other one. So this is how it looks. I'm gonna go swimming. And I'll catch you my next clip. This was definitely my favorite part of the trip. I was really excited to see the beach. I think this was my second official time seeing the beach. And it was really fun jumping into the water. I had my aunt film me run into the water for the first time. And then my uncle who's sitting beside me um, got me and my two cousins to go on a motorboat ride, which was really fun. And we just got to sit and enjoy for like 45 minutes. I don't know why I keep waving to the camera. And I wanted to show you this clip because I've noticed that the water is green at some sections, which I don't know if it's algae, coral, or something else. A wave hit our boat and it was really fun. <laughs> And now we reached the shore. It was really fun filming this. I couldn't get enough of the sand. It was really soft.
and my aunt was filming me making a sand castle. It was really fun. It felt like I was a kid again. And yeah, that's the end of my trip to the Al Jazeera beach in Maqdishu. Alright guys, I've saved the best for last. I'm going to show you the Daru Salam, the city. And it's a very rich, um, bougie city in Maqdishu where a lot of foreigners and well-to-do people live. And we are in this neighborhood because we are here to see the the Daru Salam amusement park. What is it called? Mm. Basically, it's an amusement park where it is a zoo combined with a playground and it has a few rides like the Ferris wheel. And we came in here to check it out. And because it's not a Friday, it was completely deserted. Uh, the whole time, it felt like, you know, the movie Shrek, where Shrek and Donkey go to Lord Farquaad's kingdom and they go inside the castle and they're like, where is everybody? That's literally how it felt because there was not a soul inside the amusement park. This is us walking around. As you can see, there is like a heart banquet um, design thing. And I really liked it because I took a few pictures there. The place is really nice. And as you can see here, that's the playground I was talking about for children. And here is the zoo. It had several animals. There was a deer just randomly walking around. I was so confused but just pleasantly surprised that there was a deer just like walking around instead of inside a cage. And then we saw a few monkeys. Oh, and these are the lemurs from Zabumafu. I was so excited to see them. That's a fox, I think a red fox. And I took some clips of the wall decor, like the paintings on the wall were really pretty. So I took a few videos of it. And here are the hyenas. I would hear them at night. I would hear a group of hyenas laughing. It was like an inhuman laugh that really brought chills down my spine. But seeing them up close, they just look completely harmless. They look like overgrown dogs or werewolves. And here's the Ferris wheel. So, a funny story, I really wanted to go on it. But then the person who was going to turn on the ride told me that I had to bring two other people with me. Or else he would not turn it on because it was such a hassle to turn it on. So he said it needed to be worth his money. So I convinced one of my cousins and the driver to go on this Ferris wheel with me. And they were not happy about it. But I was very grateful that they decided to come. It was a very slow ride, but it was pretty fun to go on. And shout out to my cousin over there. He's the one that decided to come very last minute so I could go on the ride. So yeah, he is definitely not happy. <laughs> this is how slow the ride was going, but it was a great view. And that was the end of our trip to Daru Salam. And right next door to the amusement park, there was a restaurant that we got to eat at. The fish was really expensive, but it was great in my belly. And on our ride home, I caught a very large herd of camels. And I was super excited to catch it on film. And here is another herd of camels, if you can see right up ahead. There's lots of camels out here. Very graceful creatures. 
all right guys that's the end of my video on my vlog um trip to somalia if you liked it give it a thumbs up and look forward to any future content i tried to make this more of a voiceover and more talking instead of just um music and because i know a little bit more about somali culture than turkish culture i wanted to put in my input so yeah thanks for watching and i'll catch you in my next video bye